Do you know what the word tolerance means? If you do, I salute you because I have no idea anymore. I did once. Everybody did once. But now, thanks to the left, the word is totally up for grabs. Is it? I mean, really? How about this? If you can't treat other people with dignity and respect, just leave them alone. With, of course, allowance to defend yourself against others who refuse to do the above. Let's do this. Bionic Dance! Greetings, fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. We hear it a lot, this idea that not putting up with other people's crap is itself intolerance. Now, let's assume for a moment that they really do mean this, that it's not just a dishonest defense of bigotry, just for the sake of argument. This fundamentally misunderstands the entire point of arguing for tolerance, which is not giving free reign to do whatever in heck you like. It's also not about thought control. No. The point of tolerance is to allow marginalized people to not be mistreated. Tolerance is not about suppressing ideas, but rather about making sure everybody shares and plays nicely with the other kids. It's about your behavior towards others. However... To be tolerant today simply means you agree with politically correct, that is, left-wing positions. That's all it means. You don't have to agree with anything, and actually, tolerance is extended toward the right wing as well. I fundamentally disagree with the right wing mindset, but as long as it doesn't affect my life in unwelcome ways, I'm quite willing to tolerate the existence and even the presence of right wingers. The problem is that the right wing doesn't extend the same courtesy toward those they find objectionable. This is easy to show. Name one position that differs from the left that they don't label intolerant. When you differ with the left on any subject, and I mean any, the people who claim to be tolerant don't attack your position, they attack you. They label you, as Dennis Prager puts it, six herb, sexist, intolerant, xenophobic, homophobic, Islamophobic, racist, bigoted. But why would you be labeled in this fashion? One thing these people will never do is take the reactions of others as legitimate criticism of their behavior to wonder if maybe the other side might just have a point. And look at all of these labels he's listed. Sexist. In other words, you're treating women badly for being women. Xenophobic. Treating people badly just for being different. Homophobic. Treating people badly for being gay. Islamophobic. Treating people badly for being Muslim. Racist. Treating people badly for being ethnic. You're being called out for being bullies. That's what makes you intolerant, your behavior towards others. And being told to play nice is not intolerant. You can gnash your teeth at the existence of people you dislike all you want, and while someone might disagree, it's fine, right up until you start being a jerk about it. I wouldn't think it'd be such a burden keeping your prejudices to yourself and just living your own life. And if that fails, there's always the ever-popular hater. This is obviously not tolerance. This is blatant intolerance. Your accusers are guilty of doing exactly the same thing they're accusing you of doing. One thing you'll notice is that he's very nonspecific, very vague throughout the entire video. The people calling for tolerance are doing the same thing they're accusing you of doing, he says. But he doesn't say what that thing is, or rather what he thinks it is. Is that on purpose? I don't know, but I suspect it might be. It's hard to argue against something when you don't know what it is, and you can be accused of not understanding or even strawmanning their position quite easily if you hit them where it hurts. Dishonest. Here's what they're missing. In order to be genuinely tolerant of someone, you first have to disagree with them, since you don't tolerate people you agree with. The classic definition of tolerance means to recognize and respect others' beliefs and practices without sharing them. Encyclopedia Britannica, and I prefer encyclopedias to dictionaries for complicated issues like this, defines tolerance as, quote, a refusal to impose punitive sanctions for dissent from prevailing norms or policies, or a deliberate choice not to interfere with behavior of one who disapproves. Toleration may be exhibited by individuals, communities, or governments, and for a variety of reasons. A refusal to impose punitive sanctions, in other words, not being a bully towards those who are different. 
We wouldn't even be having the tolerance discussion if it weren't, for example, people trying to say, keep LGBT folk from getting married, just to pluck an example out of the air. If you had been tolerant of them, if you'd been willing to live and let live, we wouldn't be having this discussion. But you didn't. You decided to be intolerant, and thus started a fight against your punitive sanctions for dissent from prevailing norms. Tolerance is about finding ways to get along, and the right wing isn't doing it. Refuse refuses to do it, must be forced to do it. And that's not intolerance, that's self-defense. Notice the element of disagreement is key to tolerance. Without it, true tolerance is not possible. This is critical. We don't tolerate people we agree with. We're on the same side. We only tolerate people we differ with, yet still choose to treat decently and with respect. And you get labeled with all of those fill-in-the-blank phobic terms because you're not treating people with dignity and respect. That's the whole point. This vital ingredient of real tolerance is completely missing in the politically correct version. Nowadays, if you differ with others on culturally sensitive issues like sexual orientation or religious beliefs, you're labeled intolerant no matter how you treat them. Bull. It's all about how you treat people. And words can hurt. Words can treat people with the very opposite of decency and respect. Words can change minds, and advocating bigotry is itself intolerance. For example, Pastor Steven Anderson is advocating the execution by the state of homosexuals for religious reasons. This hasn't been started. Nobody is doing it. But can you truthfully and in good conscience claim that saying it publicly is treating LGBT folk with decency and respect? Because I sure hope not. If someone were calling for your execution for some trait or other you possess that makes you different, I suspect you might not take it very well, would you? I imagine you'd call it quite intolerant. But when other people fight against your punitive actions for them being different, suddenly they're intolerant of you? It doesn't work both ways. The person defending themselves against a bully is not being intolerant. The left says all behaviors and ideas have equal value, that no behavior or idea is any better than any other. They don't act that way. The left says? I honestly don't know anybody on the left saying that, and certainly not that any behavior is no different. And I'm a rabid and screaming Bernie supporting LGBT atheistic lefty. You'd think I'd have heard. Tolerance is a one-way street for the left. Openly declare that sex differences are real, as Harry Potter novelist J.K. Rowling did, and see what happens. You'll be called transphobic by the left. Look, I very deliberately stayed out of the crap storm that ensued when certain members of the atheist community had a disagreement about transgender issues. I disagreed with the tactics of the side with which I agreed philosophically. The side I disagreed with very quickly revised their stance after being called out but was treated as once wrong, always wrong. And there was no way it was going to end well. I wanted no part of it. And I still don't. Suffice to say, though, that statements like those made by Ms. Rowling aren't just opinions. They hurt people. They lend legitimacy to those who would see others kept down. They are intolerant statements. But I thought, according to the left, all ideas have equal value. And what you thought was wrong. That's on you, buddy. What the left has done is cleverly redefine tolerance to mean agreement with leftist views. Tolerance no longer means treating people with civility and respect even when we disagree with them. It means not disagreeing with them. That is the left. The only reason this is a left-right issue is because the right keeps advocating for their rights to be bullies without recrimination, and the left is forced into the position of telling them no. What the right will never accept is that they are the villains of this story. If they could play nice with the other kids, we wouldn't be having this discussion. But they started it and forced the rest of us to defend ourselves against them. Being told that, no, you're not allowed to mistreat people, should be the position of both parties. But apparently it isn't. He says the left redefined tolerance, but it's the right that's been trying to do that. Telling them they're not allowed to be jerks is apparently intolerance of their bigotry. But if we were to strip away the labels and actually describe what sorts of behaviors should or should not be allowed, the differences become quite clear. The left wants people to get along. The right wants people to conform or to stay out of their sight if they won't. Which of those sounds tolerant to you? That's how, in the name of tolerance, the left shuts down all disagreement. 
It defines any contradiction of leftist views as intolerant. This is just an attempt to play the victim and to blame one's political rivals, to avoid any of one's own blame which might be legitimately owed. If we look at the reality of who did what to whom, it becomes clear that he's completely full of it. But not only is disagreement not intolerant, it's morally and logically essential. Think about it. All ideas, all behaviors are not equally valid. Some are better, some are worse, and discussion and disagreement and debate are how we sort out the good from the bad. Civilization depends on it. He's been trying to frame this argument as just a war of ideas, as if the practical application of those ideas has nothing to do with their value. Those KKK members who hanged all of those black guys? Aw, they just had a philosophical disagreement. Those guys who beat up Matthew Shepard for being gay, leaving him to die tied to a fence in sub-zero weather? We should just be tolerant of their feelings towards homosexuality. Matt Powell, who stands with Steven Anderson on having the state execute LGBT people, well, that's just a discussion to be had, right? If you want to know why the left has such a hard-on for fighting intolerance, maybe it's because of little incidents like those, where the different ideas, when put into practice, resulted in harm for those who didn't share them. If the left gets its way, we all live and let live. If the right gets its way, we get fascism. Tolerance doesn't require we treat all ideas as equally valuable. No, true tolerance means we treat all people as equally valuable. And when you're tarred with labels like homophobic, racist, bigoted, etc., it's because you're not treating people as if they're equally valuable. Because they're not agreeing with your ideas. You cannot separate the two. Your ideas drive how you treat people. And you're treating people intolerantly, as if they're not equally valuable. That's the whole problem. You're not practicing what you preach. Boston College philosophy professor Peter Kraft has a good way of putting it. He says, be egalitarian about people. That is, treat all people with equal dignity and respect, regardless of their views. But, he says, be elitist about ideas. In other words, treat some ideas as better than other ideas. Again, you cannot separate the two. Like when a cashier who, for religious reasons, refuses service to someone who is obviously LGBT. They're using their ideas to make somebody else's day worse, where instead, if they just rang them up, everybody could go about their day and it wouldn't be an issue. That registered drone is using their ideas as an excuse to not be egalitarian toward people. That's why we call it intolerance. It's not the idea itself, it's how it affects people. Like I said, you could be a raging homophobe who hates that there are gay people wandering around openly, unashamed and unhidden. But if you just clench your teeth and be egalitarian toward them, we wouldn't be having this discussion. This isn't a war of ideas. It's making bullies realize that their mistreatment of others comes with a price tag. That's all. Why? Because they are. Some are good, some are bad. Some are smart, some are dumb. Some are dangerous. And we ought to be able to have the liberty to figure out which is which in our discussions without being called names and certainly without fearing we'll lose our jobs or our careers. Sorry, but no. If you're going to be putting forward ideas which may be used as license to hurt other people, you should be afraid of losing your career. Ask yourself whether a natural consequence of what you say, even if it has to be taken to an extreme, will impact another person in the form of needless harm. If it might, maybe you should keep it to yourself. I seriously can't say this enough. The refusal to lend bullies free reign to make other people's lives worse is not intolerance, it's self-defense. Let me say it again. Your ideas are being used as excuses to hurt people, and refusing to permit people being hurt is not itself intolerance. Once more for those in the back row, intolerance of intolerance cancels itself out. Refusing to allow intolerance promotes tolerance. And in the end, that's what really matters. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Toleration may be exhibited, exhibited. Toleration may be exhibited. I imagine you'd call it, qual it, qual it. But if we were to strip away the labels and actually describe what sorts of behavior, behaviors. Attention citizens.
citizens. Failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens. Failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens. People not subscribing to Bionic Dance is one sign of the apocalypse. Save us all. Subscribe now.